Hello again, Taraj42 here with another Hyperlight Drifter video. This time, we'll be exploring all of the secrets in the Western Zone. Now, like the Eastern Zone, uh, you do need to have the Railgun from the North, as well as Chain Dash in order to get everything, so I've gone ahead and done that. So I've got the Railgun, so it's Pistol and the Railgun, as well as the uh, Multi Dash upgrade. So let's get to it. Now uh, this is uh, the third area that I'm doing. There's actually nothing up here which I find perplexing. I mean there's a skeleton but that's hardly a secret. You can break this box. <coughs> there's actually not too much in the center area. North and East each had two gear bits, but I was only able to find one here. So if you know where the second one is, do let me know. We should end up with about 42 total gear bits. Which is plenty, but it makes me feel like I missed one because we got more in the other areas. Uh, and if you stand right here, you can see your little floating companion, which I believe is called a sprite actually. That's one of the few things in this game that has an official name. We'll get a question mark next to him whenever you find one of these invisible areas. There's so many things that you think would uh, lead to something, but as far as I can tell, the secrets are all deeper in. Ah, nice hit. First one's right here. Well, I guess second one technically. Ta-da! Also, let's see, get over here but there's nothing. Like last time, uh, I've got a list of stuff that I need to collect. I'll check it now and then. Most of this is going to be from memory though. Secret. Oh, it was suggested that I open the map temporarily whenever I find something like this. I think that's a good idea. At least for the important stuff, like power modules. First one down. You need four in each area in order to power the elevator for the final boss. So, I'm doing the west area third because I found it to be the most difficult uh, and certainly most confusing area. I'd recommend doing it third, but uh, obviously you can do west, north, and east in any order you so choose. My recommendation was and is east first, then north, and then west. Because certainly this guy has got to be the toughest of the first three bosses, in my opinion. The northern boss can be pretty hectic with all of the uh, AoE, but didn't give me nearly as much trouble as this guy did. So if you haven't seen the other videos, a common attack I'll do is I'll fire one pistol shot and then do two sword slash. You can actually swing the sword right after you fire the pistol. That's an animation cancel. So I'll be doing that a ton. The combat in this game is super satisfying. And here's another gear bit. 
You also see a little secret area up there. We'll go to that later. Um, much later, actually. To minimize backtracking. I'm gonna also try and show you like where a lot of the med or health kits are. This area has nice ambience, so I do like that much about it. Gear bit. So that's the fourth one. There's a nice well here. I feel like there should be more to this area, but no, not that I could tell. You can go north here, but we'll come back to this later. We need to pick up a few more keys first. I don't know. Maybe I'm expecting too much stuff out of uh, secret areas. Like, it could be that part of the reward is just the setting or the scenery or maybe there's lore hidden meaning in these areas that it's not what I'm looking for so oh. so these wolves are pretty annoying they run around randomly and then sort of jump towards you so one easy way is to just sort of wait for them to attack and then get two slashes in another is to fire one pistol shot and then slash them with your sword as they're charging you Here's another invisible thing. If you stand at the corner, you can interact and reveal this pathway. Yeah, but this is kind of what I was talking about. You only get one gear bit for coming down here, but if you look, this is kind of like one of the monoliths, and this is total speculation. I haven't actually read up on it, and I probably should. But I would guess that that is used to translate the monoliths because people have already done that uh, the hidden meaning in them to get extra lore and story it's pretty interesting I've read the translation but I've not read up how they did it <laughs> I'm not very good at fighting wolves there see that's sort of what you're supposed to do Ideally. Because your sword's got really good reach, so as long as you can uh, shoot them, or slash at them before they attack, they'll usually jump into your sword. Like that. But it's very difficult, so... Two buster, or buster, haha. <laughs> Two pistol shots is the easiest. can't break that box because you can't use your weapons in this area. I wonder what's in it. Probably nothing. The right side is a dead end, as far as I could tell. But if you go around left... Another good bit. Yeah, we're in the, like, treehouse area right now. That's number six. We're on track so far. Now we go down. This area's got a lot of breakables. It's kind of setting you up for the next set of enemies. All the samurai, so you can see all their armor. Oh. Uh, don't worry. He's fine. I'll walk it off. And then they immediately lock you into the area. I'd say first you should come down here and take these guys. And again, I'm doing the one pistol shot into one sword slash to take them out really quickly. A lot of times when you go for one of those uh, health kits, it'll spawn an additional enemy get ambushed. I think that's pretty neat. And here we find the samurai. They'll charge at you, but it, they've got a really slow build up, so they're not too tough. 
to take out. As, as long as they're by themselves. If you get swarmed, or you're focusing on other things, they can uh, pretty easily take advantage of you. But the combo that I'm hitting them with is one pistol shot, one sword slash, and then a second pistol shot, and a double slash. But I missed one of the pistol shots, so we followed up with a triple. Don't stand next to explosives. I feel like those guys with wolves is a pretty effective combination. Unfortunately for me. Just heal. <laughs> so, uh, I figured out how I missed this. Because this was one that I didn't get for a long time. You see something on the ground here and you think, Oh, I can probably go that way. Oh, well, it didn't work. I guess there's nothing there. Didn't swing fast enough. Whoa, he almost got me. Hmm. I thought there was like a health kit or something up here, but I guess not. So you go up here and activate this power switch. So I'm going to grab two more gear bits. Which puts us up to eight. Nice. And that uh, power switch moved all the blocks down, right? Let's see? I missed this one for a long time because of that. They very rarely make uh, switches affect something off screen. Usually switches affect stuff that you can see. Because if you're affecting things off screen, it's hard to like know when that happens exactly. But here is our second power module. And I'll check the map so you can see. We're down in this bottom right area. I believe that was actually the eighth one I found. Ah, and he drops the gear bit. I guess I should have said final one that I found, but I'm sure you know it's coming. That's everything. Hmm. Must be thinking of something else. But here we activate the uh, teleporter. So now we can warp back here at any time. That's convenient. Something that I didn't know the first time is that this will refill not only your health, but also your ammo and grenades, or special weapon. So we don't have enough modules to open that door yet. Need all of them. But you can get a health kit, as well as like, see this little area. So we're going to go left first. If you went up, there would have been an elevator to take you down. Oh, you can actually take health kits without breaking the box, because you can see, you can interact with it. 
thought that was kind of funny. Well, hope you've been practicing fighting wolves. Oh no, an ambush! That freaked me out the first time. You're just walking towards the power module and then three wolves come at you. Ah! But here's this. Uh, it's weird. Why is that up? So you can switch underground on and off. Maybe they consider this an underground area. Boxes. My laptop fan kicked down. Hopefully you can't hear it too bad. Poor computer's working itself hard. Oops. Alright. So now we're going to start seeing a lot more of these crystals, which, as someone that likes to destroy all the breakables, really hurts me on the inside because they keep respawning oh well and here's an introduction of like one of my least favorite things in the area and one of the reasons that I would not recommend going here first is these crystal spikes these in particular are really weird because there's a collision in the middle of them that is not normal um, I think that's left over from something this area used to have anyway if you go south we can find some stuff down here so sneaky when I know you're coming. Sorry about the sniffles. Alright, and remember the uh, pistol and the sword slash combo? It's very effective. Alright. Forgot about these guys. So these are the crystal spiders. You find them, I think... Where did I find them? In the north? Yeah. They're not in the east. Which is another reason that's the best area to start with. Oh, he got frozen! I've never seen that before. I was like, why is he standing still? That's funny. Go ahead and heal up. But the crystal spiders will jump on you and freeze you. Let's leave that up for a second. And leave you vulnerable. So if there's a bunch of spiders, they can actually combo you from full health to dead. So they should be your priority. Yeah, but if you do the, the pistol into sword slash combo, you can take out pretty much any enemy really quickly. Now we're going to turn this off. When you're trapped in ice, you can break out by pretty much taking any action. So, like, rotate the joystick or press all the moves. And you can get out fairly quickly. Alright. <laughs> that was a little close. This area is pretty rough as far as that goes. Oops, you have to break that before opening. Okay. Grass skull on yeah. 12 bits so far. We're on track. I think that's it for this area. Pretty sure the next thing is two cent. Almost missed. Yeah. Really appreciating that health pack right about now. Still calling it the wrong thing. It's a health kit. At least according to the save file. So, oh, nice. You almost got me. We're going to go north first. And uh, I missed this shortcut, and 
I think it's just because, like, you see all these spiders and you're like, I do not want to go that way. But, if you brave the, brave the spider den, you are rewarded. Oh, I also picked up one key. I forgot to mention that. So I went to the north and I got one key and the uh, railgun. So we're sort of in the top left area. That little bush right there. That's where the key is. Another health kit. Touche, sir. The gear bits that enemies drops aren't random, it's the specific one. And if you don't pick it up when you re-enter the area, it'll be on the ground in a fixed location. Alright, get ready for a fight. Oh, that was a new enemy. It's uh, similar to the samurai, except uses a gun and only has 3 health. Oh, when there's only one Dirk remaining, and we know those are Dirk because of the achievement. He likes to run away. It's kind of funny. And now we can advance. Let me scroll my notes down slightly past all the stuff we've already got. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So this next one is kind of tricky. A lot of people have asked, how do I get over there? Like, do I need an extended dash, or... A lot of questions like that. But I'm going to show you. It's a health kit. And this is where the rifle helps, but you don't need it. Because you need to hit that thing. I'm a bad shot. If you run out of ammo, you can actually break the crystals to get more ammo back. But yeah, just aim up left. It can help to use the background, but I usually just sort of shoot a whole lot until I hit it. Okay. This is scary area. I died here quite a few times before I finally got it. Because if the spiders freeze you, then most likely other spiders are going to freeze you, and you're just going to have a bad time. But you can like step on the corner of those or dash across them. But if you thought one gun switch wasn't enough, you're in luck, because there's more. And you get a health kit there, and invisible pathway. So this is a pretty deeply nested secret, but we're not done yet, actually. Over here, this is the 12-key uh, co door, and behind it is the golden outfit and one gear bit. So if you're following the timestamps in the description, I'm not going to count that one, so that way you can, like, the number will be accurate. Just know that there's one gear bit that you can come back and get later. And another gun switch. All of these you can hit with the regular pistol. There are some that you need the rifle for. One in particular that we'll get to later. I was uh, streaming the routing of this area and it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. It was like an eight hour routing session. And uh, I didn't know about this one. Someone in chat pointed uh, it out and said, hey, are you gonna go to the bottom left area? I'm like, what bottom left area? So, the more you know. 
Yeah. The only thing that I'm confident about is like each area has got four keys, four monoliths. Oh, and I'll also show you in the map we're sort of in this bottom left area right here. Yeah, actually that. This underground area is the 12 key area. But uh, each area has four... More spiders, really? Four keys, four monoliths, and... Well, eight power modules. Oh! And that's one reason I don't like those, is because of the combo potential. Alright. If you get hit on one, it's pretty easy to get hit on a second one. Yeah, but that's how you get over to this area. <laughs> pretty crazy. And then here's our backstory for this area. Apparently the people were using lasers to fight the giants, and one of them got frozen and only recently broke out. And now he's here. Have some confetti. If you push your special weapon button in town or next to an NPC, that's what happens. This area you can kind of see that there's something you might be able to get to over there. I guess that's their mm, teaser for it. And now we're going to go down. Did you know you can sit on elevators? Let me double check. How many am I supposed to have? 15. Okay, yep. We're good. Yeah, I don't know whose bright idea it was, but it's like, let's have the floor be a toggle switch. It's like, I don't feel like having a floor today. Let's turn it off. And that hidden switch there will open all of these. You can go in and break this stuff. The only one that's got anything in it that I know of is right here. Get a gear bit. You'd think there'd be something down below, because pretty often if you're like next to a ledge and you can do a dash and the camera pans, um, if the camera doesn't move, you're like, okay, there's probably nothing there. But if it does move, it leads me to believe that there might be more to it. But I couldn't find any uh, invisible pathways, so. Probably nothing. And here's another where, if you look at the shadow, there's a one pixel indentation as well as stuff on the floor. That's really all the indication that they give you that there's uh, something hidden on the other side. Which, if you ask me, feels a bit like a pixel hunt. And hey, we've got four. Nice. Oh, brace your ears. Ooh, that looked unpleasant. I'm sure he'll be fine. See, look. We're just gonna walk it off. And I feel like this stuff on the floor right there, where my gun target is, um, typically indicates that you can walk over in the area. And in this case, it reveals an invisible floor. Leading to another gear bit. But this area in the top left is what interests me. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's at uh, like screen location 00, zero, and it's an area they use to temporarily store sprites, because watch what happens when I fall off. See, I peered up there for a second. Uh, and I think it's their like loading zone for bringing in new animations or you know however Game Maker works. But I thought that was pretty interesting. And that switch will open up both of these, but I didn't find anything in either of them. Oopsie. 
Maybe this one has a health kit, I don't remember. Okay, yeah. So I guess that's something. And another elevator. So let's see, that should be 18 or 17. Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh, whoopsie, nice, you got me. But the dog sort of. Oh, he killed me, I only had two health. That's okay, honestly, I wanted to watch this again. Um, you'd think this would be your introduction to the crystal spikes, because those enemies demonstrate just how dangerous it can be. But, uh,. These you can dash over without any trouble. There's no weird collision on them. Okay, and we gotta go left first, I believe. I should probably just go ahead and heal. Sometimes I try and like it's like, ah, oh, I can take one more hit. Oh, right, I forgot how many dirks there are. So the rifle pierces. It's a really cool weapon. For the most part, I'm only going to use the pistol. Just in case anyone does decide to do this area first to show you that it can be done with just the pistol. The other guns are just uh, a little more helpful. So here's a guy that shoots you. Alright, you like being shot, huh? And here you can just barely walk along the sledge covered with crystal to pick up health kit and a gear bit. Oh, and that health kit is a trap. These spiders are some of my least favorite enemies. As I was saying. Like, anything that stuns you is just super mean. And now we're in another secret area, this time in the uh, far top left. So like we took that elevator, which actually the underground stuff lines up really nicely. If you see the elevator locations are mirrored on the uh, overworld and underworld, I guess, map quite nicely. Wait a second. This is the third time I'm going to make the joke that there's more than four. Indeed, um, I did not see that coming the first time. When I found one and I'm like, but I already have four, where's it going to go? And then it fills in one of the corners. It's like, whoa. I guess I should grab that health kit. There's nothing over here, right? Maybe my nose doesn't say anything. Okay. I'm just paranoid. There must be a secret everywhere! I need secrets inside my secrets. Oh hey, there's an enemy. Where'd you come from? You know, the crystal golem's footsteps, it sounds like a party. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. We're just gonna walk it off. And here is... Is this our first one? I think it's our first one. 
This is a monolith or stone tablet. Uh, you can interact with it and it reveals symbols, which uh, I think correspond to some sort of alternate library or vocabulary. People have been translating it, it's what I was referencing earlier. So they sort of tell like the hidden story of the game. Okay, uh, I wonder. I'm gonna try this once, we'll see if I get it. My dash timing is not very good right now. Oh, neat. So, um, first off, devs, please don't patch this. Second, we just skipped the final boss. So you can actually activate this switch early. And if you backtrack this way, um, it takes you to the terminal after the boss. <laughs> so you can uh, activate it without ever actually fighting him. But that's cheating. Anyway, neat stuff that you can do. So this elevator we can't get to from this direction. Uh, and this is where I said that this area is kind of confusing because there's a branching path. Back at the teleporter I said that you could go up to an elevator that takes you underground. Oh, and about the glitch I did. I if I can find a video uh, description of it, I will link it in the description below. But I'm not going to explain how it works because I don't understand it entirely myself. That's uh, the first time I've actually ever successfully done it. But this area branches and then connects back. So this is sort of like a shortcut once you get it. There's also turrets and spiders here. It's like worst enemies. You can't damage the turrets and if you're in line of sight they will shoot at you. Some turrets are controlled by a switch you can disable them but those aren't so we just have to dodge them. Once they start firing though they don't change their targeting so you can juke them pretty easy. And this has disappearing blocks. Now you can do this without multi-dash. Uh, and actually the easiest way is to dash down and then left. You just gotta watch out for the spiders. Which fortunately there's a health kit right there. Because this large one's tough to get across. If you have a chain dash, it's not too bad as long as your timing is good. Which mine isn't, as you're gonna see later. I like breaking things. I am a good shot. Not really. So there's a health kit. So uh, I actually still don't know how to open this door. So if anyone knows how to open this door, do let me know. It's one of the few doors in the game that we don't know how to open, and it bothers me. Alright, there's also another health kit up here, and this is interesting. I don't know if this is intended as a shortcut. Uh, you can't actually get through here. So I don't know if they just forgot to put collision here, or if that used to be a shortcut that they were considering, or like a dev shortcut or something, but I can't get through it. Maybe it's tied to a switch uh, that I don't know about. This is the one place we needed the rifle for. I'm going to go ahead and hit it, and then we'll show it to you afterwards. Get a shot at here.
I missed. All right. We'll clear the area out and then we'll get it. Oh, you only take the elevator? I'd rather not. But you can see the switch in the top left. Stop shooting me, you can't even see me. There we go. The switch in the top left will make short- Hold on, what? Was that always that? Rifle does piercing. Man, those guys are annoying. Anyway, this switch you can activate with your sword or the rifle, but not the pistol. And this is the only reason that I went to get the rifle, is that one switch. But it's important because it lets you get to this secret area, and you can see enemies are coming to sneak up on us. Rude. They line up quite nicely for the rifle though, which is probably intentional since you need it to get here. And then you can activate this switch, which will take you to this area for a key. That's key number two. I had one extra coming in. And I still don't know how to open this door. It bothers me. Yep. And that's that. And we must go deeper. So I should have 21, and I do. And we're in the underground right now. We were in this room, and now we're in this room, and we're going to this room. This area's got quite a few secrets. Including one that has a an unintentional ooh, way to get there. So let's hit that switch, and it, it will only crush you if it pushes you into a wall. So we can go over here. Grab a health kit. It's the only thing. And then this guy. And then you can get a little teaser of this area. And it almost looks like there's something over here, but didn't seem to be. Yo, I missed. I will, <laughs> did I mention I'm not a good shot? The rifle is super fun though. Ow. Even if you can't aim. So these are some of the few turrets you can actually disable. Now this guy, you gotta watch out for him. If you're close, he'll swipe at you, and if you're far away, he'll jump. So, like, the best way is to get him to jump and then stand back and hit him after he lands. Not as he's landing, because if you're too close, he'll take damage. The pistol can actually hit multiple enemies if they're close enough together. I try that sometimes. Here we got another little party going on. If he charges up his fist, he's gonna do two smashes. If he does a quick attack, it's only one. A quick punch, it's only one. Now, this is not how you're supposed to get over there. If you break these crystals and go to the far right and then aim to the right, and I got frozen, All right. and then aim to the right and then dash, and then dash again, you actually get over here early. This is not the intended way, or at least I certainly hope it isn't. Because <laughs> there's an easier path to get to. I thought I saw a gear bit lying on the ground, but it was just dust. So see, he like kind of charged that punch up. So this is where they kind of try to indicate to you that, hey, you hit this switch and something changed that you couldn't see. Because this one went down and then it's like guiding you forward over here to this way. Yep. 
So I recommend taking out the turrets first. And then you can take care of these guys. We get into all these and I was hoping there'd be a secret to the left, but there wasn't. Which that's fine. Again, not everything needs a secret. And you can see down, it's like, oh, how do I get there? I feel like secrets like that are fine. Where you can see that there's something that you should get to, but you don't know how to get to it. I think that's fine. It's not fine is when it's like one pixel passable walls. So he was actually hiding. It's like I knew he was coming and I still got it. Uh, this is another one where the indication on the floor is uh, telling you that you can go right here. I feel like combined with the fact that you know there's something you need to get to, it's okay. But by itself, I, I don't like walls like that. And then this area, you gotta watch out for those. Oh, these were the guys I was shooting at earlier. And that's how you get this module, which is what, number six? Nice. So let me catch up on my notes. I did four, elevator, five, top left, yes. So how many gear bits are we up to? 23. Cool. So far, so good. Oh man, I bumped on the stairs. Don't dash down stairs. It's dangerous. You get another health kit right there. Because we got an arena! Booyah. The uh, pistol shot into sword cancel essentially lets you do double damage because the pistol shot will do one and then your sword slash will do one. And when you do the three combo, you've got a cooldown afterwards. But if you just keep doing one slash, you can do that a lot faster. So you can do a ton of damage really quickly. It's like a, a basic thing, really. And it's just one trick, but if you can do that one thing, you can dish out a lot of damage to enemies. Alright. So now we can kind of loop back. And this should be familiar. Now that these blocks are down. This is the elevator where we started. So if you take the teleporter, you can actually use this as your shortcut to get all the way back to where we were earlier. So that saves quite a bit of time. See? And here's where the boss will exit. So now we gotta go to the right. And by right I mean left. First, we have an invisible path detour then. And this is one of the first places where you're going to want to have multi-dash. You don't need multi-dash strictly, because uh, you can do this. And this is difficult, like, uh, I wouldn't try it, I would recommend just dashing instead. But if you only have one dash, you can get across over to this key by walking along that edge there. And this is our third key. I had one coming in. And I'll show you the map. We're on the bridge, we went to this far left section here. Oh, I'm sorry, skeleton. I was just trying to break the boxes. But here's multi-dash, or chain dashing. And I bonked. But 
it makes that section a lot faster. And honestly, probably safer. Which is a bit ironic, because usually when I chain dash, I get myself into trouble. <gasps> Dog! Friend. Did you see where Dog went? So this is, I believe, a fellow drifter, and he lets you know where several uh, of the power modules are, and tells you that he's had similar visions. This happens the first time you've talked to him, which, if you've followed this video series, is actually the third time we've talked to him, but new file each time. And it's funny, uh, we actually have collected most of the ones he told us about. There's only one new one. So, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, where is it? Ah, here we are. But you can walk to the right here and pick up uh, another gear bit. As well as a health kit, which we're full on, so I'll just leave that. And, um, you can get over there, but... I got stuck over there once. It's kind of hard to get back from, so there's nothing over there as far as I know. Only death. Oh, and another health kit over here. I believe that's all there is for this area. And this is a three module door, so since we have three or more modules, a couple more, we're able to continue. Now, if it's your first playthrough, it's not uncommon to actually only have three at this point. In fact, I'd say that's probably the standard. Alright, I don't remember which way I'm supposed to go first. Okay, this is the way forward because of the light beams. That's all I remember. So we need to go, I think, right first. came from that way. Okay. Again, if I miss anything, it's probably just going to be a gear bit, uh, and I'll add an annotation as well as put a note in the description what was missed, where, and how. We'll get all the important bits, though, for sure. Flower. The first time I came over here, I, I was a little suspicious. I'm like, a whole area, a loading zone, just for a gear bit, but I couldn't find anything. Except if you go over here, there's an invisible path, so. I was not very good at finding secrets the first time playing. And you get a gear bit. And a health kit, if needed. And another one of these, although they're all over the place in this area, so I don't know if it's just decoration or if it has some sort of significance. Because all of this behind an invisible pathway for one gear bit seems a little much to me. So, again, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I want to believe that there's meaning in these tablets. Oh, that was close. Oh, I forgot. That's so mean. Is that? Tw yeah, it's twenty-eight. Uh, there's spikes right on top of that box. It gets me every time. Oh, look, a health kit. I'm gonna go grab it. Oh no, an ambush. I never saw this coming. Real talk though, that was actually kind of cool. I don't know if it's just the range units, but I noticed that some of these guys will actually flinch if you hit them. 
So you can use that to interrupt their attacks, so kind of convenient. Elevator. So we got 28, and this is going to be power module number 7. These guys were very dedicated to their card game. I gotta hand it to them there. They're probably still waiting on the two other guys to come back and finish their turn. Seven. Alright, and here's the map. We're at this underground area, which is based off of this elevator. Uh, so actually, someone in the comments suggested that I do that, so, which reminds me, I just want to thank everyone that's uh, posted saying, you know, thank you for putting this together. Uh, this is kind of like my first real YouTube video, and it's been really a pleasant experience, all of the kind things people said in the chat, so, just want to say thanks, you guys are awesome. I hope you continue to enjoy these videos, because this is a really fun game and the secrets are super cool. Alright, now this area. Bring it on. You got me, wolf. I got you that time. Combo too strong. Hmm. I think we'll go north first. I can't remember if I was supposed to go north or south first. It's a minor difference. Uh, so this one can actually confuse people. When you see that switch and you wonder how to get to it, I feel like they didn't really make it obvious enough, but you can jump down. There's not too many places that you take advantage of the fact that you can jump off cliffs, but it does happen in a few areas. If you swing too early, sometimes you can get them with a the second swing. Oh, actually, these guys can do something cool. I kind of want to show you. See that? He deflected my projectile. Uh, he's one of the few enemies that can actually deflect your projectiles. There's a, a pretty funny video of someone running around with one health and uh, getting killed by one of the projectile deflections. Nothing over here, right? I don't think so. Uh oh, oh no! I got combo. Well, I didn't figure I was gonna get out of this area deathless, so that's why I hate the crystal spikes. Big rooms with uh, no auto saves. Welcome to Hyper Light Drifter. All because I wanted to show off the thing. Oh, you know, I think I missed this anyway, so it's probably for the best. Whoa. I dropped my combo. Got four health. Let's try not to get comboed.
Okay. I'm gonna do it. I'll heal. Mm, yeah, almost slid into it. Which actually... I just did a slide cancel. Forgot that that was a thing we could do. Oh my gosh, stop hitting me. The ranged guys are like the most annoying. Oh my gosh. No. Okay. Wolves scare me. Mercy. Alright. Now that was a room, wasn't it? We'll come back to that room in a second, uh, but we gotta clear this out first. I walked into that one. Sometimes they don't know how to get to you, it's kinda funny. So here you can go into this building and pick up a gear bit. That puts us at... 32? We on track. Whoa. Also, if you've done the east area first, you'd have the shotgun at this point, and the shotgun point blank will do five damage. So you can one-shot all of the samurai. You just walk up next to them, pop, walk up next to them, pop. It makes this area a lot easier and kind of fun. Also, if you've got projectile deflection, the range guys aren't as bad, because you can just uh, knock their shots right back at them. I like that guy. He pops out of the bush like, surprise, and then just doesn't actually attack. I don't think he thought that through. And we're going to go up here. I only found this area because I wanted to break those boxes. I would not have tried to go up here otherwise. I like to break things. Ooh, and here we've got another secret. And this is... Yeah, this is the last one, isn't it? Power module number eight. So there you go. There's all the modules. You still have plenty more secrets to find, though. But this is on the left side. No underground area for this section. I wish there was a shortcut back, like it moved the tablet or there was a ledge you could drop down. I was like, you get to the end of a secret area and it's like, oh, here, shortcut back. That one's not too long though, so. Oh. And down here is a four key door. Now this is why I had to get one extra key before coming to this area. Because each area has four keys, however, the fourth key was behind a four key door, so I had to have one on the way in in order to get it. So that switch will deactivate those blocks. I was wondering how to deactivate those blocks, and now we know. I pretty typically do three chain dashes, because that's before the slide kicks in. you do four, 
you slide. This will be important later, and you'll see why. So we got a gear bit. Yay, that's everything. Except there's also a key over here. So now we got eight power modules and four keys for this area. Pretty good. So I should have 33 gear bits. And I do. So far so good. Oh man, look at all this carnage. Who did that? Ah, here we are. And so you got this suspicious little area over here. But there's a crystal in your way. Here a bit. So that's 34, and I guess that's it. You'd think there'd be something else over here, but... Again, this is why I want to believe that this tablet has meaning. Although it's the same as the one that's over there, but kind of covered up. I don't think it's the same as that one. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it's just decoration. Are there always birds before the boss door? Yeah, I bet there is. I only just noticed that. Okay. So this is, in my opinion, the hardest of the first three bosses. And another reason that I suggest going west last. He is basically a stronger version of you. And pretty crazy. But actually, if you get to where you can see him on the screen... There he is. You can get two shots in before the fight starts. He doesn't really like that. So he does a multi-slash. The final slash will do two damage. And then he'll do the crystal smash. And then he will shoot a larger version of the pistol. And then he starts over. So again, I'm doing the like pistol cancel to get in extra damage. And then once he gets below a certain health, he'll go red, and now he's going to do three slashes, so... And he does two crystal slams now. The uh, gun is the same, though. He can pretty easily combo you with that slash, though. Uh, sometimes, depending on your distance, he won't do all of the slashes. Having multi-dash can help here, because you can get more dashes in quickly. Uh oh. Oh, I don't have any more health. What? He will only ever do three slashes. After that, he rushes at you and goes for the crystal slam attack. That guy will take you a few tries. But he does drop three gear bits, which puts us at 37 total. And he gives you a gun. So this is uh, basically a larger version of the pistol. It has knockback, it does two points of damage, uh, and it has less ammo than the actual pistol. The same hit radius, and no splash or AoE. Basically, it's bigger, it's flashier, but it doesn't have any real use or purpose, so we've nicknamed it the Hummer. And now I'm going to switch back to the regular pistol. Because it is strictly better. Oh, brace your ears. Wow, 
Oh, we're already over an hour. Oh, I thought this area was going to take less time in the north, but I guess because of how much backtracking there is. Well, not really backtracking, but because the area loops in on itself, it's taking longer to get through. And I did have that one death, which one death so far is not too bad. So we've activated the terminal, which means we've got one-fourth of the power needed to uh, access the final boss. And also almost missed this one, but someone during the live stream told me about it. So, shout outs to them. I'm gonna go ahead and heal. I don't wanna like get sent back to the boss. I know it's saved afterwards, but This area is really dark, and I was confused the first time. At first, I thought um, the light areas whoops, were actually walls. I'm like, how am I supposed to get around this? But it's actually a pit. It's like, oh, playing tricks on my mind. And right here, I, I don't know. I guess because it's sort of an indentation, but I feel like this one uh, was pretty easily missable. Here's monolith number two. This is the second one we found so far. And I feel like there should be a gear bit or something in here, so if I've missed anything, do let me know. I wasn't able to find anything though, so. Oh, and that's a unicorn. Just saying. You will never unsee that. And here we get back to this area, which, if you remember from earlier, that's how we clipped up to, so you can actually skip the boss doing that. And honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you did. He is pretty tough. So let's see, we've come full circle now, we have four keys, so there's only a couple more things left to pick up, and these are going to be backtracking. So let's see. Alright, so we're going to go back to the right. You remember when we first got to the area, I said we'll get to that gear bit later, like way later? Well, it's way later. Ow. It's weird, all the grass is still cut, but, uh... Wait, is this the right way? Yeah. Have to fight all these guys again, then? Grass is cut, but the enemies are back. Remember, you can sit on elevators. <laughs> okay, I think this is the area we're looking for. Well, not quite. Close, though. You got me. I pretty often swing too late against the dogs. You might argue that the pistol we picked up, because it does two damage, is more effective against the wolves. But you can just fire two pistol shots and it's basically the same. At that point you may as well just use the rifle, because it does two points of damage, has the same ammo, but it pierces. So this is back where I said you could go north for a secret.
and there's more stuff but first we're gonna go up here this is a three key door and behind it is monolith number three and a tree we got a real close look at that tree And you can see a gear bit. Um, yeah. We'll get that next. See, I feel like this is fair. You know there's a gear bit to the right, and you see this stone path here. So this is a good secret. I should say fair. It's a fair secret. There's another gear bit. And you can get over here to this. Gear bit number 40. So we've gotten 10... I'm calling them gear bites, because if the little parts are a gear bit, then, well, it only makes sense to me to call it a gear bite. I wish more things in this game had official names, which, again, if you know what something is called, like you saw it uh, maybe in a Kickstarter post or a tweet, anything that could be official, do let me know. I've got a document on keeping track of all this stuff. And now that we've got all eight modules, we can get behind this. And I'll go ahead and say that uh, it seems each area has an eight module door, and they put the fourth monolith behind it. So that much is pretty consistent. And we're going to go back to this room last. That's how we're going to end. Because, my goodness, is it a room? Wow, I think I dashed into a projectile he fired after we beat him. Ugh. <sighs> So this is kind of tricky. If you go down, you find this secret path, but it actually dead ends. But if you go down left, then you get to the actual other area. And there's a health kit there. Okay guys, we're going to jump at him from on top of the trees, but let's go one at a time to make sure it's fair. Sure thing. I guess samurais are all about honor, right? It's weird, those blocks are up until you hit uh, an area above it and then they go back down. And of course, there had to be another secret. But here it is. The fourth monolith for the western zone. And a gear bit. So, real quickly on the map, that's the south area. Which is just directly below the warp point, so very easy to get to. And this room is where we're going last. We've got everything else um, behind the 12 key door that we didn't get to go down is a room that has one gear bit and an outfit in it. It is the golden outfit, I believe. Which, every outfit actually has some small benefit. I'll put a link to a post that has information on what each of the different outfits do. Most of them are known, 
Maybe some outfits have multiple effects. Maybe not. So, I'm sure there's still like testing and discovering discoveries to be made. Alright. So this is where the sliding is going to come into play. This room. Goodness. So, if you sit down during a slide and then get back up, like, you'll still slide. But if you sit down after you start sliding, you'll stop. So there's a couple safe zones that I'm going to try and stop in, but you typically slide past it. So if you actually sit down by pushing down on the D-pad. <laughs> of course, if I bonk, it doesn't matter. You can cancel your slide. Ooh. And I'm just dead. If you get hit from one onto another, uh, that's four points of damage and there's not much you can do. If you hold either A or X... Ouch. <laughs> I'd be panicking too. If you hold either A or X, you actually do the get up animation faster. Alright, there should be a spider coming this way. I think I got him. Nice. Oh, good so far. I'm going to switch to the rifle. So actually... That was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, let's try that again. I was attempting to lure the enemies back. This room took me a few tries the first time. And by a few, I mean a lot. Oh, the spider. You see that? got one health left, but I lured some of them away. Those spiders, man. <sighs> nope. I didn't have enough health. That's why I was trying to lure all the enemies back, because if you can lure them onto the crystal spikes, you take them out. Uh, chain dashing takes stamina, which I only just realized I probably might have been running out. Oh, and that's why I don't like the crystal spiders. If they stun lock you. Alright, we got this. Uh oh. Okay. No. No. <laughs> there are so many dirks. Okay. Slid onto it. Ah, oh, I saw the spider coming and got freaked out. This is uh, one of the hardest challenges that I've come across yet. 
Maybe I'm just bad at chain dashing. I've only been able to get up to 200 in the 800 chain dash challenge. I have no idea where I am. I had no idea what was going on there. I was probably a little hasty. Whoops. We can do this. That was a bit lucky, wasn't it? Let's go ahead and heal. Alright, we're on to something. Okay, now we just gotta get back. We did it. Goodness. And your reward for that is the blue-green outfit. Which actually is, I think, the only one that is not well understood. Its benefit is not known. A lot of people speculate it has something to do with making chain dashing easier, considering the challenge you have to go through to get to it. But that's not yet confirmed. So that is it. That is all of the secrets in the western zone that I know of. If I missed a gear bit, uh, do let me know. Let me double check my total. I should have 42. Hit 42. And we do. We have 42 gear bits. Uh, there was one outfit I wasn't able to get, but I was able to get this one. So to change outfits, you can go in here and then select each part. The outfits appear in the order that you've collected them. I don't think they get sorted. Go check out the mirror. Now, uh, in the northern video you unlocked one barricade, and in the eastern video you unlocked a barricade. Same is true for west. If you go down here, you can see that you've got half of one. If you clear west and north, you can get access to this area, which behind it contains a mini-game that is almost as challenging as the chain dash puzzle that I just did, so do give that a try. And this is the area that you have access to. And actually, if you go down here and talk to this guy, and if you look in the corner, you can see a snail. And you can feed him, I don't know, bacon? Do snails eat bacon? Here, buddy. Yeah, you can see him uh, walking around. So uh, go hang out with the slime, slime, the snail for a bit and see what happens. He's pretty nice once you get to know him. But yeah, that is everything in the western zone that I know of. It took me a little longer than uh, I was hoping, so apologies for that, but we covered everything, uh, including that crazy chain dash puzzle at the end. Uh, this was a lot of fun, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found a few secrets. If you know of something that I missed, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, and otherwise, now that we've finished each of the primary zones, the uh, east, west, and north, the next video will be the final area, the south. And it's going to be actually fun because for each of these I started a new file to kind of go through it without any of the upgrades or anything. But 
for south we're going to actually collect everything in the other zone so that way when we go to it we'll have like a lot of upgrades and stuff and we can show off all of the the cool new things that we got so that's going to be fun i'm looking forward to that anyway take care guys happy drifting and uh i'll see you in the next video